Today's conversation is sponsored by the Billy Keels Advisory Program. If you want to learn more about how to make your nine to five optional, just go to billykeels.com forward slash advising. Once again, that's billykeels.com forward slash advising. If you have a great idea, you should pass it by a few smart friends or, or colleagues or people you really trust. Because if it is real smart, they're going to tell you that. And if it's just your own smart, <laughs> they're, they're going to tell, tell you, you too. too. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Going Long Podcast the number one podcast for the strategies, tactics, and actions high wage earners need for living an intentionally designed life of wealth and resilience. Welcome to the Going Long Podcast. We're back once again to continue to help to educate you so you feel much more comfortable as well as confident investing beyond your backyard. I'm your host, Billy Keels, and guess what? Wow, today's conversation, you're really gonna like it. It's gonna get into some mindset, gonna get into some things that don't always happen exactly as they should. Um, So, just to know there's going to be some vulnerability here. But before we even do that, I would just want to say thanks so much to all of you who continue to tag us, who continue to uh, share across social media, LinkedIn, Instagram. It means the world to us. Thank you. Uh, and also for those of you who continue to leave your honest written reviews as well as ratings. If you've been listening to a couple shows, you want to do that. Uh, it helps us to reach more people and um, and we it means the world to us. So really appreciate that. And also, if you want to check out any of the previous episodes, uh, we've got a new uh, site for you to go to. So go to billykeels.com. Uh, forward slash podcast and you can check out every single podcast we've ever done it's over well over 350 some at this point in time uh just go to once again billykeels.com forward slash podcast so uh today we have a uh, a company owner founder uh who's just north of the border uh in the in, in north america on the upper end of north america so that's probably giving it away already uh he's gonna talk to us about uh, some of the background that he's had in sales, understanding of the real estate, uh, both on the transactional side as well as from an investor perspective, talks about some really great things that happens, talks and shares and gets really vulnerable about some things that weren't so nice. Uh, but he's doing that so that you can learn, grow and avoid uh, different challenges uh, that he went through. And it's really, I know you're going to get a lot out of this conversation that I have with Jordan Sylvester, who is the uh, CEO of Jordan Sylvester Limited. Um, we're going to get to that conversation just after this. So if you want to understand how focusing on sales and the client experience can booster your long distance investing success, then guess what? Today's a conversation you're going to want to listen to until the very last word. Yes, the very last word. You know why? Because today's guest not only started his career in the sales profession, in the real estate industry, that sounds like something that's pretty cool. He also started his own business in in a globally known Uh, let's call it a brand. And I'm sure he's going to talk to you a little bit more about that and how he got started with his own business. And and today, you know what? It gives me great pleasure to welcome the CEO of Jordan Sylvester Limited, the man himself, Mr. Jordan Sylvester. Jordan, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks so much for having me today. It's awesome to be here. Hey, man. (laughs) Are you sure we're going to have a lot of fun today? You're going to have a great time, man. (laughs) I always have a good time. I love talking and just hanging out with people. So it's, uh, you know, Good just to be here to chat, you know, go through life. We all live, we learn, and uh, hopefully through failure, which actually is success at the end of the day, if you learn from it. So, yeah, you game. keep going. Yeah, you keep going. You keep going. You get to the other side, and uh, you have a lot of experience that you can share with others. So, um, Jordan, you know how this goes, man. Love the pre conversation. You're going to get two questions in the beginning, you're going to get three in the end. Yep. And in the middle, well, you're going to probably get a lot of questions from me. I just don't know what those questions are. <laughs> but um, before we get started, I've got question number one for you, if you don't mind. I'm going to put a little spin on this one because I would love for you to help us understand where is it that you call home in North America? So in North America, we're in the most southern point of the cold Canada. So we actually are just slightly south of Detroit, Michigan. For any of you who might know where that city is, and we're south, of course, of Toronto, Ontario, which is about four hours north. Detroit's only about 10 minutes away. Um, so that's where we're geographically located. Um, you know, we we get the uh, the nice weather down here in the summertime, but it does get chilly, but not anything like other parts of Canada where you can get minus 40. We, we see that maybe for a day or two. Parts of the country see it for a few months. So Grateful to uh, live in this 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 country. Grateful to to be over here. I know the rest of the world's a cool place. Can't wait to uh, check most of it out one of these days. Yeah, well, uh, we see if we can <laughs> connect it with people from all over the globe. Hey, you ever been up to Thunder Bay? Uh, I was actually up in um, somewhere called Ranger Lake, which is just north of the Sioux. 
Um, okay. So that's that's as far north as I've gotten in Ontario, which is kind okay. of funny because you realize like you're still hours away from the most yeah. northern part. Um, yeah. You know, I've been to Ottawa, I've been to a few of the other areas here, and then basically, uh, I actually traveled more in the states than ever in Canada, just because you know Cali, go down to Texas, Florida, mm-hmm. different places like that, because trying to get out of still we're in Canada, so a lot of times we're, we're headed further south than we are headed uh, north. But yeah. uh, we have beautiful country when you get past uh, the major. Mat- metropolitan areas like toronto where we are down here in southwestern ontario yep. man this country is big and beautiful and uh when your cell phone doesn't work um as a sales guy as a person who works 24 7 when i went up there like we were at the place they yeah. had some wi-fi but other than that you left and went out for the day your cell phone doesn't work there's no way to get back so if you get lost you're lost and that's a cool thing when yeah. you've been stuck and tied to the business you know that was probably one of the best experiences i've had in a long time it's no, cool that's pretty business. cool. And plus when you're, when you don't have your phone for a little while, life actually can get pretty exciting. So no, I was yeah. asking you about Thunder Bay because I had a couple of buddies from mine from college who were, uh, played in juniors in hockey and they were up there yep. and stuff like that. So anyway, and I know it's super cold. It gets really, really cold uh, <laughs> in the winters. But anyway, listen, man, see, yeah. this is what happens when you get two people who love the sales profession. Like we just want to talk. I, I don't think we'll, be, we're going to hit any of the time markers, but here's the question number two. <laughs> I love positivity, man. So Jordan, help us understand what's the most positive thing that's happened to you or for you in the last 24 hours oh in the last 24 hours just actually this morning went for coffee with one of my good friends just uh you know struggling with life at times and just the reassurance you've got people in your corner Mm -hmm. um the positivity i get is i i sometimes wake up like all of us do with bad days or bad thoughts or you know struggles in life and to have people and relationships around you that just lift you up and remind you hey Today might be tough. Tomorrow, you know, it, it isn't about how how you always are. It's how you choose to be. And and so yeah. it's just that reminder that you got people who love you, care about you. And so for me, it's just uh, all the relationships I have. But like starting out today, woke up, you know, just, you know, getting moving and then, you know, meet someone for some breakfast, have a coffee, chat with them, get to get to hear their life, get to spend some time with some human beings and get yourself set right. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great reminder. And uh, I had a very interesting uh 2023. And it was the deep relationships and, and friendships and people that just check in on you and say, Hey, look, man, how you doing? Uh, you want to, yeah. you, you want to talk or you just want to sit here in the mud together and just uh, kind of talk about what's going on. But you, you start to realize the importance of having really strong, deep relationships uh, with people. And when you can reflect on that, like you've just done this morning, Jordan, or this afternoon, or whenever you're listening to this <laughs> or watching this, whoever you are. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's really one of those things. It's great. So listen, man, let's keep moving forward. Um, I, I, like, one of the things that everybody knows about me, uh, the going along family, cause they're here twice a week and they've been here for the last <laughs> number of years, which is fantastic. And we appreciate that. Um, they know that I do some things that sometimes are a little bit, well, kind of out of the norm because I am a recovering perfectionist. And so I try <laughs> to do things that sometimes you shouldn't like try to tell your entire backstory in one and a half seconds. You've done too much. You've impacted way too many lives. And for goodness sakes, you're, you've been a part of the sales profession. So I know you've got a lot more to tell. So I'd love for you to help us. Uh, if you could share your backstory, take as much time as you want uh, to tell your backstory. Uh, and at the same time, I'm going to ask you for a favor. If you could share some of the different and most difficult decisions that you've made to get to this point in your journey. And then afterwards, we'll see where you and I take the conversation. Sounds good. Uh, so we'll rewind. Uh, let's go all the way back to 2007. So we'll we'll uh, we'll skip the uh, years that I lived in Toronto and all the uh, decisions of an 18 year old moron until I was about 23 years old. Uh, so so basically, 18 knew everything. 23 realized my dad knew something. Um, so I was actually in Toronto looking at a different real estate company and going, maybe I'll jump into the business. My dad got in the business in 88, so he had been in the business by this point for 19 years. So what I do, I do, I give him a call. We're about, like I said earlier, it's about four hours away. We meet in the middle in London to have have lunch because he's going to decide whether or not, you know, A, whether or not I should jump into real estate up there or B, whether I might come back home and actually do real estate with him. So as you fast forward, uh, you know, three, four weeks later, I'm back in Windsor working as my dad's admin, um, you know, from 18 thinking I knew everything to 23 realizing at least I didn't know everything. <laughs> and hmm. by this age, if you understand, I realize I know almost nothing because I have children now myself. So, you know, <laughs> life teaches you in time. Uh, so then jumped into the real estate business, got licensed in March of, uh, 08. So again, 16 year anniversary is coming up in a month, um, of, of being in this business. Uh, the coolest things and the hardest things though. And I'll say like that decision, when I rewind it, it's like, Oh, that was easy. It's like, no, I was choosing to leave a life where I'd been in Toronto for a few years and come back to work with my old man. Right. And so for a lot of us, you know, 
Um, it, that takes a slight amount of humility that had to enter my being to to do that. So I will say when I went to meet him, I didn't know how that conversation was really going to go. And and the encouraging thing my dad did is even though I was a bit of a tool as a as a as a child, he was willing to meet me where I was, um, you know, love me where I was, which is an, you know. I get in life. I, I'm very grateful for that because not everyone has those things. So mm -hmm. it was hard for me to come back home. I had to like, I moved back in with my parents. Like, you know what I mean? It's you're 23 mm -hmm. years old, you're coming back or 22 and you're moving back in with your parents and you're trying to get your life back on straight. But the cool part about that was, was once I did that, uh, met my wife a few months later, uh, got married a few months after that didn't take too long to kind of get my whole world stabilized. So it's like, I'll say there, like it, my life moves in, in spurts. I find like if you're in business or if you're in life, you'll find that there are moments where you go through a lot of turmoil and pain and suffering. And then the way out, you start to make better choices, make good decisions and learn from the mistakes of the previous things to understand how to make better choices moving forward. So we'll fast forward a little bit. I jump into the real estate business. I'm helping people invest. I'm helping get my feet wet in the buy and sell day to day <clears throat> business. And then we fast forward to 2019. Now, by this point, two kids married. One of the reasons why I didn't start investing young is because I didn't understand there's not a lot of risk in it. In my head, there was tons of risk just because the the real estate crash of 08. Everyone was like, "Oh, the world's going to end. The, the the market's crashing." And all these these mindsets. And then finally, by 2019, I went to a conference in. In actually February, and uh, Gary Keller, who's the CEO of the company that I'm with as, as a realtor, he goes, every great deal that your clients have made a bunch of money on has passed through your hands. Like every opportunity to create wealth for your clients. And like, dude, I love the fact that I was able to do that as a realtor to create a ton of wealth and, and prosperity in my clients' lives. This isn't like, oh, I should have taken it from them. It's like, but you're able to do that for not only them, but yourself. He's like, how many realtors don't own real estate beyond their primary home, right? Like how many people say, hey, you should invest, invest, but realtors ourselves didn't do it. So for 10 years, basically in the business, I knew I should, and I just didn't pull the trigger. And then finally in 19, I did. So when I fast forward through 19, I, I get into the real estate, uh, switch over to the real estate investment side of the business. Uh, still doing the, you know, the real estate business as well. Start investing, doing some flips, doing some Burr model, doing kind of uh, all the things that were working in the market, got into the flips. And then you fast forward to 2022 in the market correction. And this is the, <laughs> I, I was humbled when I was, I've been humbled a few times because I'm, I'm a dad and I've got kids, I got a wife, right? So you get humbled along those 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 paths. But in business, I, I was humbled when I joined the real estate business. And I was humbled again in 2022 because I, I thought I knew it all. And as the market shifted, my investment corporation that was worth a fair amount of money at the time went because most of it was all held equity, right? And when the equity market drops and you're in an 80-20 rule and the market drops below that 20% mark, then you're in losses. Like it doesn't, people think like the difference, if, if I own a stock and it goes down 20%, I usually own 100% of that stock. So I just lost 20%. When you are in real estate and you lose 20%, you're only, you're leveraging 80 and usually holding only 20. So that 20 goes away, that's all of the wealth disappears. And that was what I didn't fully grasp was that it would happen not only in my, um, my business, it would also happen in my personal world too. Like my personal wealth in real estate would mm -hmm. also be affected just as negatively by that equity change. So all the protections I thought gotcha. I had to get out of a problem, let's say if this investment did go bad, you know, as, as a good investor, you always look at the pros and cons and the risks and rewards and how much money, like if I take this risk, do I have enough to back it if something goes wrong to protect my family? Mm -hmm. The issue I made, which is I still look back and go, how did I not do this? And, and for anyone out there, if you Every time you look at it, if you think the equity, equity is a dangerous word because equity is not controlled funds. You don't have access to that money without changing a position, which means you have to liquidate an asset. And all mm -hmm. I'm going to say to you is, is that when the equity and the property you're trying to flip or in, in whatever project you're working on, if the equity falls there and it's in the same light as where the rest of your wealth is held, that means the equity over there is likely falling too, unless you're holding it in different countries and doing some of that, which again, is is now the mindset. It's like, okay, where do we invest? How do we invest? How do we protect better? Um, and so, uh, yeah, I got, you know, my rear end handed to me and uh, and had to be humbled and uh, and kind of come out of it. And you know what? I'm better man for it. Um, you know, I'm still working my way through that. I'm back into the real estate game. That's why I've started doing the podcast thing. I've started doing the socials thing. I just want to be in front of people. I want to try to give back from my life experience, from the sufferings I've been through. And hopefully if I can in your audience, save people from some of the mistakes, right? Like, hey, it's hard because you a lot of I'm a person who usually has to learn by experience. I wish mm -hmm. I could learn by reading. It wasn't that people didn't tell me or warn me. I didn't fully understand all of what they were saying. And now I understand better. I say I got my PhD in investing. 
Um, you know, I, I, I've done the mastery of real estate as far as the buy and sell and, and the function there as, as a business professional with my clients. Um, and then again, I would just say I, I my hubris got the better of me once again and remaining humble at the same time, you need confidence. Like I, you got to have that confidence. You got to have that knowledge, but humility to know that you should talk to really smart people, smarter than yourself. Like if you have a great idea, you should pass it by a few smart, bro, you know, friends or, or colleagues or people you really trust. Cause if it is real smart, they're going to tell you that. And if it's just your own smart, <laughs> they're, they're going to tell, tell you too. That too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, you know, a, a quick rundown on my life uh, today. Awesome. Working with amazing team. Now uh, I've, I, I've gone back to building a real estate business um, as far as the transactional side, client care, managing people, doing the social stuff, trying to just give back to the community because I know that the simplest truth in life is reciprocity exists. If you want to help others or if you need help, help others. And a lot of people want to help you. Like people, we uh, I've learned this. Money isn't the driving force. Money is the product of helping others. And if you learn that by helping others, money will be there. Because when I got into my problems, when I went through all these struggles, I was able to turn to a lot of people and say, man, I made some mistakes. These are the places and, and humbled myself before them. And they didn't sit there and throw things at me and get mad at me. They, got, they came and picked me up and loved me. Mm -hmm. And so- you know, relationships are going to win you the battle. If you think money, you know, money is important, but I've learned it's a resource, sort of like food, like it comes and goes. And if you're not careful with it, you know, you can, you can, but you can always make it back, but you can't fix relationships. So keep your relationships really lean in. Like I said, coming back to work for my dad after really breaking the relationship at 18, it was my, his rules or move out. I chose move out, right? Like, and he was just trying to be a good dad. He didn't expect his son to make that call. Like in my life, I've learned that the relationships that I'm able to, to create, the bonds I create are all the value is in my life. Yeah. You know, and when you're able to find, identify and, and recognize where the values are in your life and you can, you can hold on to them, that's where, that's where the magic happens. Right. And yeah. so, you know, you talked about a number of different things and in, in, in one of the things that I felt like you were really embracing were was like what happened when the market corrected, right? And you yep. said you kind of you, you kind of had your your, <laughs> your, your your stuff handed to you, right? Um, <laughs> yes, sir. And so there's you know there's this there's this part of, um, and it's just I'm just reflecting myself because I, I think a lot of people this will happen to, especially those are people that are high performers, they're in their corporate role. Like we like we tend to talk about the positive stuff, right? Because yep. it just sounds better. There's also this reality of like when you get your stuff handed to you, like people are curious as to how that happened. And they're curious as to how it happened to you because they don't want it to happen to them. So I'm just curious, the more that you've told this story about the negative things that have happened to you, how much more are people asking you? Are you, are you perceiving that people want to ask specifically about the negative thing that happened to you to try to help themselves to not have this same thing happen? Hopefully that question is clear. Uh, yeah. So I would say, so I, in two parts, I heard it sort of in two parts. So I'll respond to it in two parts. One is the actual thing that people say to me is, how are you still so positive when I tell the story? Mm. How do you maintain positivity? I said, well, that's the only real option left. Like, what's the benefit? I can go sit in my poop over here, like sit mm. in my dirty diaper, or I can go do something mm. about it. And I'd rather engage the world with love and care. And the only way I'm able to do that is the relationships that gave me the power to be able to love and care. Like I needed to be filled by these people who stood beside me as my world fell apart. And, mm -hmm. and, and I will say this, it wasn't like I w woke up one day and had like this, you know, moment, it was a six month process of going through some really, really tough conversations with myself. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'll tell you, talk to a mirror, talk to, like I recorded myself. I talked to a mirror. I listened back to my crazy, like I know I'm an, I'm a crazy person. That's what makes me me. And, and in a good way, like this is part of who, what makes me capable of some of the things I'm capable of that other people aren't. And it's mm. not because they, they just don't think the way I do. But when I listen to myself, which it sounds, it is a weird thing. I'm going to tell you, you got to be ready for it because when you're honest with yourself and you have real conversations, you're going to say some crazy things. What you got to be careful of is don't believe everything you say. That's called perspective. You're mm. gaining a perspective of how you truly view yourself then the next piece of that is actually answer the questions you ask. Actually say, is this true? And then what you really do is talk to the people you love in your life, the people who care about you. Ask them if it's true. Hey, when this happened, does it like I know I I know I can see some of the missteps. I know I can see some of the places where I, I stepped off, but like 
was it like, did I do it intentionally? Does it look like I did anything with malicious intent or that I had a heart that wasn't in the right place like that? Cause it affected like when, when you lose that in a business, you're usually not doing it alone. I, I didn't go down alone. I, I brought some people along with me and that's where most, if it was just me, if I didn't have a wife and kids and, and partners and people, I'll, oh dude, I'd, I'd be fine. I'd just be like, okay, reset zero, let's go. But when you have other people and you realize that you've affected a lot of other lives and you meant to do it all for good. Like when I mm. brought people into my world and I brought these people in and then for a number of years, it was really good. Like these guys all made money. People were doing well. We were able to kind of live like, you know, Kings, like the best thing I can say is like, I was able to pick up a, 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 a classic car and, and do some things that I wouldn't have normally been able to do because of the investments and other things. Mm -hmm. And then everything changes, but be okay with the change. So so again, when I look back at that that shift, the biggest thing for me was I survived it because of the relationships. Um, I'm surviving it now because of those same relationships. I'm rebuilding on the basis and foundation of those relationships because honestly, there's no money, right? Like mm -hmm. the only way to dig out of a, a financial hole is to produce money. But there's, it's not like you can go to the same people and say, "Hey, I'm I'm a worthy lend right now." Like, and if I had a great investment or a great opportunity, don't get me wrong. That's the coolest part is they've all agreed to continue to work with me. Like I still have mm -hmm. access to funds because I, I'm a man of integrity with them and I proved it. And that's mm -hmm. not to state, I'm not saying that proudly. I'm just saying that it, it takes a lot in me to remind myself. I'm very grateful that I didn't become something else. Like there's a, there's a moment in, in every person where I think you can choose to become that selfish that, you know, all right, I don't care if I'm burning, I'm just going to light it all on fire and I'm going to deal with this. So it protects me the best. Or you go about it. How do I treat everyone with due respect in this process, even though this process sucks. And I'll say it, 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 it I, I, I'll probably write a book and it's going to be called from hubris to humility because I, hubris is the word I've chosen as the, mm. as the simple understanding of hubris is where you believe something beyond a fault when you should ask questions, mm. you need to clarify. And that's where I got into my biggest, my biggest failure. I trust you're enjoying today's conversation. If you want to find out more about how to make your nine to five optional, just go to billykeels.com forward slash advising. Once again, that's billykeels.com forward slash advising. Now back to the conversation. It's refreshing to hear you talk about the these different topics, right? And one of the things that you mentioned early on, or at least I, I believe that I heard you just say, I heard you say is that you were able to get through this because of love and, and the care that others showed for you during a very difficult time. This show is about you, not about me, but I, I can relate to a lot of that because yeah, at the end of the day, um, it's the relationships that, that matter. But you said something that I kind of want to push back a little bit on because you said there was no other option other than to maintain positivity, or at least that's what I thought I heard you say. And the reality is, Jordan, that's always an option. Like you could have chosen to sat over there, to sit over there and like, <laughs> you know, not do anything and, and sit in your, you know, stuff uh -huh. and just like not do it. But I think it's important to recognize the fact that you chose to to not and you chose to look for the positive and you chose to surround yourself with people that showed you care and showed you love. And because of that, right, or as a result of that, like you're here to and able to tell your story, right? To the yes. extent that you that you want to be able to tell the story and you're actually positively helping others because they're hearing about you, they're hearing like the stuff that you that that you went through. And they're able to say, well, you know what, even if things are not always perfect or even go according to plan, it's a moment of time. It's a way to be able to understand what could have happened, what did happen. And as a result, like you make a decision, like where, where are you going to do? And the fact that you chose to maintain and focus on the positive and work through that and be here today to tell about it, well, you're positively impacting others uh, through your story. So, um, so here, here's one of the things like, no, this is like this always happens whenever you get salespeople together because we like to talk. So before we kind of get ready, because I've got to start transitioning us, transitioning us a little bit. Say that fifteen times fast to uh, <laughs> to the going long final three. But I know I talked about in the very beginning, um, Jordan Sylvester Limited. Talk to us a little bit about what Jordan Sylvester Limited is all about. How you're helping people today? Because um, I know people are more than wanting to know. So talk yeah. to us a little bit about that. So the business today uh, transitioned early. Uh, well, basically starting in June when I went away with my wife for a 15 year anniversary, I took that congrats, time. Congrats, to, congrats, by the way. 
Thanks, man. I, like I took that time to honestly just try to reflect on life and, and really get my head back on straight the best way I can. After all of it, after a year of basically, that, like I said, took me six months to kind of get on my feet. Then I was like, okay, now what do I do? <laughs> right. Get back up uh, uh, on your feet. And you're like, okay, where do I go? And what's really interesting is I didn't, re- I, like you said about making plans, right? Like you, you try to think up, okay, so I went back to transactional real estate and not that I won't do investing, not that I'm not interested. It's just the market current um, the best way for me to provide for my family, to provide for my circumstance is real estate itself, which is Jordan Sylvester Limited. Mm-hmm. I do have an investment corp that's outside of that, but they are linked together anyway. But for mm-hmm. me, what it became was, okay, so how do I impact the world? How, how with everything I know and all the experience I have, even though there's so many smarter people than me, but every piece that I can give of my knowledge out that people will listen to, I just want to be able to try to say, hey, I learned this the hard way. Can you just can you just listen? I get it. I, like I get, you're going to need to learn some things the hard way, but if you can skip some of these major steps in life and just move past them, you're going to, I think there's a lot of benefit to the learning, but I also believe that if you can learn the lesson by listening, that is a great skill. One I'm working on. Um, but yeah, when, when, sorry. And again, the ADD kicks in and I get a little distracted from the original premise. Um, but your, what was the, what was the, specific? yeah, I mean, it's, re- it's really just helping us understand where the, you know, where Jordan oh. Sylvester limited, where how so, you're helping others and, and, and basically the impact that you're making. Yeah. So we, we switched over from just being in the, the business of sales to how do we support our, our community? How do we support the people that are in the database already? How do we grow the database to support more people? So we, me being me, I, I went from zero presence online to literally almost everywhere all the time. And I have people, of course, that take care of that for me. I have my buddy who who records, sets everything up. We do the the edits and everything else. The podcast just started. We've, we've, we're going to be coming out with our own as well. Uh, and all, all I want to do is honestly give back to people if it's in real estate, if it's in investing, if it's in finance, wherever wherever you want to talk to me about, I'll give you the, the, the cheat sheets that I've learned and or the people that I know who have the better cheat sheets because it's their profession. And, and so for me, it's how do, how do I grow my world in a way where I can be positively impacting the world with relevant information and not only just about like, how do I make money? It's how do I live a fulfilled life? How do I get to the life that I want? And what are the shortcuts to maybe if I do want to travel the world, if I do want to retire at 55 or 45 or, or 60, like what are the things? Because a lot of people, it's like, I'm too scared. It's like, okay, that's, that's a fair statement. Don't, don't allow fear to enter in, go educate. Here's the thing. I, I will say this as the guy who, who worked for 10 years before investing, I knew everything about it and it did not help me invest. It was a mind shift and asking really good questions. So just ask yourself questions and then go find the people who might have the answers and don't just trust the first person you talk to go ask 10 or 15 people. Why, like go, if you want to invest, go talk to 10 investors and say, how do you do it? How do you do it? And everyone's going to tell you a different story. That's the cool part. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got their own story. And really for me, that's what I want. I want to be in conversations with people. So with Jordan Sylvester Limited, we are transactional realtors. Uh, we do help you invest. We we have opportunities of, of, of JV investments as well within this corp. But at the same time, what we're really doing is we're pretty much trying to become a media company <laughs> who who gives back to the community in a meaningful way, in a, th- in a th- philanthropic way where we're able to communicate care and compassion back to the world that needs it these days. Cause a lot of people are suffering. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are hurting the economy, the world. It's just, how do we love each other better? And how do we do that? And that's really at the core. That's why the people I've hired have that same heart where we're, I'm really more focused on the content of a human heart than I am necessarily on the quality of the work. Cause I, I feel like we can train quality. You can't train character. Yeah. 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 Well, I appreciate you giving us that the overview and really the focus and, and, and exactly how you are helping today uh, from Jordan Sylvester limited. And, and here's the thing, Jordan, like we got to get into the going long final three, man. Yep. The thing is I never ask anybody and you're our special guest today. I won't ask you the going long final three, unless you tell me that you're ready. So are you ready? Let's roll. Yeah. Well, I knew you were ready. I had this kind of (laughs) sneaky suspicion. So I mentioned you were helping us where you are in LaSalle, um, Ontario, uh, over on your side of the pond. And that's my side of the pond because I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio. So not far from uh, where you are. But yep. um, I like to bring things to this side of the pond over here in Europe, because that's where this guy from Ohio, from Columbus, Ohio has been for the last <laughs> two decades plus. So help us understand, like, Jordan, what is your favorite European city that you've either visited or is still on your bucket list to visit? 
So on the bucket list, um, if I could, I would, I would hit up, uh, I, I still would love to get to England. Um, so I have not jumped the pond. My wife has, um, we've talked about going to Europe and, and doing the, you know, get in there, but realistically, if I had to choose one place, I'd probably go to Dublin, Ireland. Oh, and okay. it just, it's history for me. Like, so I, oh, I, I, uh, I'm a Euro mutt is, uh, is my heritage would go. So that's how I always say it. Cause I, I'm about 50% English, but the Scottish Irish and a little bit of the French in me. And it's just to go see where, where my ancestors likely lived in, in, and not that London, England is an amazing place. I want to, I think it's just interesting how old Ireland still is in its feel from everything I've watched from everything I've seen. I just want to go see if it really is as cool as it looks on TV. So if I jumped the pond, that would probably be the first place I would try to be, or at least make sure it's a major point of the trip. So All right, perfect. So we'll take that. We'll Dublin, Ireland. We're going to include that in the show notes. Question number two has a lot to do, to do with like just things that I've recognized from people who are successful, successful in whatever it is that they do. Uh, started in a corporate career and then afterwards meeting a lot of different entrepreneurs, business owners. And similar to what we were talking about earlier, like things don't always happen according to plan. Like, and there are times where things go really off plan. And so, mm -hmm. but I've also found that when those things that go off plan, like the most, when that happens, the most successful people, they do something that's very, very different, Jordan. And what it is, is that they do is that they literally stop either themselves or with their team. They realize they do an assessment of what happened. And then they realize like, Hey, how can we put different strategies, tactics, and actions in place. So that exact same thing doesn't happen again, right? Because mm -hmm. if it happens once, shame on them. And if it happens twice, shame on me. So I don't want you to think about the mistake or the learning opportunity or however you want to talk about it. I want you to think about the one simple lesson that you learned when something didn't go according to plan. I'd like to ask you to share that one lesson with us so that you can help someone who's watching or listening today minimize the probability of something bad going wrong. Simplest lesson is failure is learning. Um, and what I would say to that, the next big thing is, is when you recognize your failure, recognize who knows the learning, like who's the teacher, who is the person, because in life, there are going to be people that you'll need. And one of the biggest things is when I recognize the failure, it was the who's, it wasn't the how's. Mm -hmm. Um, because again, that that's where you find your competence is not going to likely, if you're the one who made the mistake, you're not going to find that inside yourself. You're going to find that external to yourself. And, and, and to me, that was the great benefit was to like earlier, I mentioned, it's that learning of who cares for you and not like who cares, but like actually who cares for you in that sense yeah. of, of care. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate uh, you sharing that, and because yeah, there's there's always learning in, in any failure event, right? So that's always mm -hmm. uh, that's always there. So, and then lastly, this is really about feeding our brains, feeding our minds with knowledge. What's one book that you would recommend to the Going Long family today? So, the, my my favorite book that I've probably read that uh, is Rocket Fuel. It's to mm -hmm. understand myself more clearly, and then to understand who I need. Right? Yeah. It's the it's the, okay, so I, I tend to be the lunatic visionary, which is good that you need them. But at the mm -hmm. same time, I need somebody who's going to tell me no. I need someone I give the authority in my life to tell me no. And mm -hmm. I need to realize that I'm likely going to pay them more than I think I should. And, and, and what that doesn't always mean is necessarily financially. I'm going to have to give them more than I mm -hmm. think I need to, more control, more power mm -hmm. to literally tell me no and put me back on task to yeah. provide for my family to do the right things to stay in the right lanes because otherwise i'm like a like again even in this phone call i get a little add at times and my brain's like hey let's go over here so man that that book uh really helped me to understand myself more clearly so that i could then adapt myself to be like okay i need i need some training wheels in certain arenas yeah. so that i you know stay what's wrong with that right if you know you need them use them yeah, and this is uh, this one I I enjoy that book as well. So Rocket Fuel will will include Rocket Fuel in the show notes, so so everyone has it. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely one that uh, is a is a positive impacting, positively impacting book. So, um, yeah, man, Jordan, these conversations fly by, man. Like it's just insane. Like it's just like I can't even believe it. Like we're in the very beginning, we're talking about, you know, you, uh, you know. Thinking about why well, are you going to work in dad's business? Yes, you went away. Um, you know, dad told you, was, you know, this is, it's my house or do something. And you decided, well, you know what? I want to go out there and I want to kind of try life and try life on in the way that I want to try it on. And um, eventually a couple of years later, like, hey, look, 
there's this chance to go back home. And so you're like, all right, well, I had this experience. Dad's not as much of a, well, <laughs> he knows a lot more than I think that I thought he did. And so, well, it made sense for you to get, head back home. And before you know it, in 2007, you're getting started. Uh, you head back, you left Toronto, you went back home. Uh, and then from there, you had this opportunity to really get involved in a an, an industry, get more of skill set. And so you start to put that into practice. And you know, you're starting to watch in 2007 and then you get to 2019 and you realize like, I've been watching a lot of these things happen. I listened to, to Mr. Keller when he's on stage talking about how many different transactions go through and how many, how few of us are actually investors. We are on the transactional side of things. So how about I get involved? <laughs> you decide to take action. You'd seen a lot of the, um, the theory and you went out, you took action. The action looked really well, was going fantastic. And then you know what, in 2022, some things kind of changed and everything that was going really, really well, things changed overnight. And so you realized and you had that opportunity to say, okay, listen, I have this experience. I have this network and things worked really, really well for a while. And they stopped working. And you know what, I can either decide to sit around and not do anything about it or be in a pretty not nice mood or I can remain positive. And so you decided to remain positive, to focus on and receive the the love and the care from people who knew you, knew the quality of your character. And you know what? As a result, you decided to make some business decisions. You just decided to get out here, start to tell more of your story, <laughs> be able to help others so that others can move forward faster. And you know what? The entire going along family is like, yeah, Billy, but just ask him the question because you know we want to really know the answer. And so I'm just going to get to the ch cut the ch to the chase and ask you, what is the best way for the going along family to find out more about you, to find out more about what you have going on at uh, Jordan Sylvester Limited? Talk to us. The best way to reach out would be uh, you could come to the website, jordansylvester.com. You could also reach out if you want to call direct. You won't get me direct, I promise, but it's 519-960-0350. But honestly, you're welcome to reach out. Give me a call. I would love to chat with you. It's just you'd need to get in contact. So if I'm on a call like this, you don't think I'm ignoring you. Um, I'd love to be in chat. I'd love to listen to your story. I'd love to learn from you. If you have any advice, <laughs> I'm happy to take it from anywhere these days. It's, you know, learning is the most important piece. And then finally, I'm across uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, TikTok, Instagram, and then YouTube. Uh, those are your primary locations. If you want to see me chatting in video form, you can find me in those locations. And uh, if you're watching out for our podcast, it's likely going to drop probably early second quarter this year. Um, so that we are still working on uh, the integration of that. But for me, it's similar to this. I just want to hear people's stories. I just want to understand their lives. So do you have the name of your podcast? You want to share? I don't. That's the fun thing. Okay. We're still right, working so, it through. It's all, it's so so it's if I good. had it, if I had it's it, in, a, uh, it might change. So uh, okay, yeah, don't worry, don't worry, Dora. So listen, whenever, whenever you're watching, whenever you're listening, you know, you'll find just Jordan. Just check him out. Just go to jordansylvester.com. The podcast will be linked. It'll be there. there. Okay, awesome, fantastic. Well, listen. Jordan, on behalf of the entire Go Along family, I just want to say thank you for deciding to invest your time with me, with us today. Uh, and thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Hey, Billy, thank you so much for having me. It's been All awesome. All right, cool. Awesome. And Jordan, give me just like 15 seconds and I'll, I'll get you out of here. So Go Along family, listen, Jordan, like he got vulnerable. He shared his, his life. He shared his story. Talked to you about decision-making. Talked to you about building a business. Talking about things kind of going pear-shaped or not going the way that were expected and still remaining positive. Take today's conversation, share it with family, share it with friends, make sure that you're talking about the things that he talked to you about, because that's your opportunity to go from theory to practice, making things real. And then while you're doing that and sharing today's episode with other friends and family, I'll be here preparing for the next conversation. So until then, go out and make it a great day. And thank you very much. Today's conversation was sponsored by the Billy Keels Advisory Program. If you're looking to make your nine to five optional and need some help, just go to billykeels.com forward slash advising. Once again, that's billykeels.com forward slash advising.